Hey guys, uh, it's Chase with csjoseph.life and we've been going over the uh, 16 personalities, uh, the 16 archetypes according to Jungian analytical psychology and uh, we did the ESTJ, the ESTP, and the ENTJ as part of the direct initiating control types also known as the in-charge structure types and uh, we did those uh, first three temperaments as well, which is traditionalists, the artisans, and the intellectual. But today we're going to be doing the idealist uh, for the direct initiating control types. So this is the structure idealist, the in-charge idealist, also known as the mentor or the ENFJ. I like ENFJs a lot. I like them like I like uh, the Chiefs, the ENTJs, uh, because it's SE Child. SE Child makes my SI inferior super happy in like every way. SE Child is all about being really good at giving the ultimate experience, and that could be anywhere from the bedroom or the kitchen, if you know what I mean. Uh, so, and that, by the way, goes for both genders. Uh, it's not just like for one gender, it's actually both genders. So, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry if the lighting's a little bit off. It's uh, a little dark where I'm at, but it's nice and outside, and I kind of want you guys to be able to see the whiteboard that I'm using today. So speaking of which, let's bring that up right now. So if you guys can see that pretty well here. All right, so yeah, that is the ENFJ uh, whiteboard. So ENFJs are the extroverted, intuitive, feeling, judging type. Uh, they're... Um, um, basically like the in-charge structure idealist as we just talked so that means they're like very people focused but they do it in a structured or in-charge manner as far as uh, social interaction goes uh, they're also direct initiating control uh, DIC so they're a dick just like the three other dicks alongside with them with the four dicks uh, DIC direct initiating control and uh, but they're very socially oriented ENFJs are all about crafting the best social experience, the best meetings, uh, the best uh, family parties or any party. To be honest, uh, a lot of people think ESFPs are the best partiers. Nope. It's hands down the ENJs, the ENTJ, and the ENFJ, but especially the ENFJ because they're so socially oriented that they can really make like the best parties. Why is that? Well, it's because they have this thing called Effie Hero. Effie Hero is all about how everyone else feels. It's about ethical decision making. They know what the collective value judgment is. So they already know how like everyone feels about everything. They walk in a room and they just know how everybody feels and they keep track of that. Uh, and they, and if they see anyone that feels bad or is down, they'll go right over to that person and light them up and try to bring them up. And of course, if they can't bring them up, then they're like, okay, well, something's wrong with you. Screw you. I'm not going to waste my time on you. You can be there alone, Mr. Dark Cloud, while I go hang out with the people that are actually fun. You know what I mean? So ENFJs can make these like amazing parties. Like for example, there's this coworker I had. His name was Chris. Uh, he had these crazy good uh parties that he'd host at his house uh, he had his Christmas dinner every year was like a big time roast uh, he'd go hunting with his friends every year and he'd bring back a uh, deer that uh, he'd shoot and have it butchered and he'd hand it out to his friends or he'd have the the meat available for his barbecues that he'd host and he'd get this giant smoker out and everything and everything was all about crafting and delivering the ultimate experience the ultimate social experience the ultimate party and uh, let me tell you, he certainly loved to drink alcohol. And to be honest, I don't know a single ENJ that does not enjoy drinking alcohol, especially when among friends. Uh, they take it very seriously. So, and that's just mostly because of Effie Hero and Essie Child. Essie Child innocently wants to give the balloons and candy, wants to give the ultimate experience, just like, uh, uh, like the best possible experience, just like the uh, Essie Child of the ENTJ does. But because, they're ENFJs and they're idealists. They want to be the ideal, perfect experience. They kind of go like the extra mile, you know, whereas uh, the ENTJ like makes it into like a work of art as that's what their experience, something that they themselves feel good about doing. Uh, it's not that way with the ENFJ. The ENFJ wants to do it because they're trying to make everybody feel good. They're trying to deliver the ideal experience for everybody. Um, so, uh, and, and, and based on how everyone else would feel about it, not based on how they themselves. Like, I feel good about this experience I'm giving you. Well, that's the ENTJ with their ISFP subconscious, you know, whereas the ENFJ, 
you're gonna feel good about the experience I'm gonna give you you know because I want to give you an experience that you feel really good about because I think that's best for you you know that's kind of how their functions go together so uh, let's talk about the ENFJ ego a little bit more we already talked about you know FE hero all about ethics everyone knows uh, you know they're aware of the good or bad value judgment of other people they make decisions similar to how a rational person does a rational person is about how everyone thinks you know true or false you know and then majority rules is their decision but experted feeling is about how everyone feels you know and it's the good or bad value judgment a good or bad decision and whatever the collective feels is a good thing that's what I'm going to do because it's all about how everyone else feels it's not about what everyone else thinks it's not even what about you know how I feel it's about how everyone else feels and that's extroverted feeling it makes them super caring oftentimes ENFJs are they can be easily taken advantage of because of how caring and how giving they are uh, to the point where they can be treated like doormats now ENFJ men you know they if it's like up front and in their face you know they'll 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 knee jerk react to it and then they'll like, put up their fists and you know go to blows over it but if it's done to them subtly if there is a subtle manipulation they're not really aware of that very much um, they, they will get aware to it over time if they have enough data from past hurtful experiences where people have done it to them Otherwise, if they don't have that information from those past experiences, or if they don't see it happening to other people around them with their SE child, SE child detects what uh, what the happenings or the experiences that other people have. And so, if they're not able to see it happening to other people, and they don't have that past data, which is hard for them to keep track of their past data because they have SI trickster. So, based off that, they might not realize they're being taken advantage of sometimes and it happens to them quite regularly so if you're in a relationship with an ENFJ or you're you're doing business with one realize that they have that weakness of being taken advantage of um, now a lot of ENFJ men watching this would say like oh no that's not me that'll never happen you know but then again like I see some ENFJ men get involved in churches you know and they just get completely taken advantage of all their time is taken away from them and for what you know for for three hundred and thirty thousand dollars of debt on a failed uh, church building great that was useful you know but like see they all have to deal with these struggles you know it's what like so I recommend you know as an ENFJ if you're an ENFJ and you're watching this like don't uh, don't pump yourself up don't uh, get so arrogant to realize that you're not weak uh, against uh, subtle manipulation if it's overt manipulation and it's obvious sure but if it's covert good luck you're gonna need some help because um, covert manipulation especially since uh, ENFJs deal with ENFPs a lot ENFPs are probably the most manipulative of all the types in a lot of cases and the reason why is because while their virtue is charity the ENFP vice is depravity which makes them you know potentially extremely selfish right and so that causes them to take advantage of those high FE users, INFJs, ISFJs, ESFJs, and especially the ENFJ. Because the ENFJ is trying to give that good experience to the ENFP, and the ENFP is like, oh yeah, give it to me, give me that amazing experience. But at the same time, the ENFJ doesn't realize that they're being subtly manipulated, that they're being subtly taken advantage of, covert manipulation, and they have to be on the watch for that. More on that in a few minutes though because that can backfire because the ENFJ has a problem where they jump to conclusions and assume they're being subtly manipulated when in reality that's not actually happening. So NI parent similar to the, ES, the ENTJ makes the ENFJ like want things you know on a responsible point of view. They're trying to be responsible with what they want. They end up criticizing other people with what they want because they know what they want and they know that they're being responsible about it but they see everyone else being irresponsible with what they want irresponsible with their intentions and because of that ENFJs end up like being really jaded towards the intentions of the people the point where they walk around every day thinking everyone is just going the wrong way 
everyone is choosing bad futures for themselves. The ENFJ is like, I'm one of the few people that is choosing a good future for myself, but you're choosing a bad future. How can you make that decision? They're constantly critical of the life choices or, to this, or the decisions of their fellow family members or any fellow human being that they come into contact with. They're very quick to point the finger about how people are wanting the wrong things or making the wrong decisions, especially decisions that will uh, impact uh, other people beyond them, like children, for example. Uh, ENFJs all the time just get so triggered when people are making bad life decisions uh, with their relationships to the point where all of a sudden there's, there's someone got pregnant or all of a sudden a, a divorce is happening and children are being split up from their parents and it's just drama. So uh, they, you got to watch out for that. and. Uh, the best way to handle it is to really just communicate the ENFJ, over communicate, like explain yourself. And that could get really tiring for me because I'm in a relationship right now with an ENFJ and I have to explain myself all the time. And then like, as a man, I'm just like, really? Why do I have to keep explaining myself? Why don't you just trust me? You should really just trust me because uh, I've earned it. You know, I've put in many, many years of loyalty and demonstrating loyalty to you you should at least trust me in where, what I'm saying, where I'm going with this. I haven't steered you wrong before. What makes it different now? Well, SE child combined with TI inferior causes the ENFJ to think about this. It could be different this time so that they take every situation on a unique case-by-case -case basis to the point where even if someone has a solid track record of loyalty, of, of good behavior in their relationship, they'll still doubt that relationship they'll still have a hard time trusting that person anyway because, but it, it could be this time that you're gonna actually betray me. It could be, it, it might actually happen this time. I, I'm seeing the signs when in reality, that's not actually true at all. But because it could be different this time with their any critic, then, uh, you know, they're, they're always on watch. They're always on guard for that that imminent betrayal. You know, uh, it's what and, and and it becomes what I call the self-licking ice cream cone. ENTJs have the same problem with their any critic. The self-licking ice cream cone. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you keep treating, if you keep doubting someone's someone who is loyal and faithful to you, guess what? You're going to cause them to become loyal and unfaithful to you. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy stop jumping to conclusions that these people are not loyal to you when in reality they are but I see the signs man I, I know I, I, I see the signs and, and it's like okay no you don't actually know what you're doing because in order for you to know you'd have to be always around them with your SE child to constantly see what they're doing so that you could like monitor them but then again what kind of relationship is that if you're just monitoring them at all times well I should be able to read their phone and know what's going on no no, you shouldn't. That's like an invasion of privacy. And for those of you out there who think that it's okay to like read each other's spouse's phones, well, that proves trust. Like, no, like that's quite honestly, guys, that's pathetic. Like if you have to, if you're requiring your spouse or significant other to like share your phone with them or whatever, so that you can read their phone all the time, that's, that's not proof of loyalty. That's mistrust actually. So be aware of that. And you know, that's because SE child is constantly trying to get loyalty. You know, uh, the ENFJ is responsible for what it wants. And because it's responsible for what it wants, it's always committed to giving the person the best experience. But it's like this covert contract, right? The ENFJ is like, well, because I'm devoted to giving you the best experience, I expect loyalty in return. And you will give me loyalty no matter what, even blind loyalty, where you'll be willing to sign your life away to me because I'm going, I'm literally signing my le life away to you. And you could be taking advantage of me, you know, and uh, I'm willing to, since, since I'm willing to follow you over a cliff, you better be willing to follow me over a cliff. You know, it's this big time covert contract. You know, ENTJs kind of have that problem, but at least with ENTJs, you could be like, no, I don't think this is cool and actually have an objective conversation about it. But with an ENFJ, not so much. They live in covert contract land. And if an ENFJ is not upfront about their social discussions or their little social rules or social games that their FE hero does with their SE child, they're not upfront with someone about those things. Their TI inferior will start to think that that's the standard and then they'll hold you to it, even though they've never communicated that with you. Even though it's never even been communicated one time, the ENFJ can do that. So you gotta be careful, you gotta watch out for that. 
Now, that's not to say that ENFJs are people you shouldn't have relationships with. They're amazing people, especially when it comes to the community, especially when it comes to family, especially when it comes to parenting children, especially when it comes to being in the bedroom and in the kitchen. They literally put their all into everything they do. They're either all in or they're all out. It's literally black and white, but because it's so black and white, it can go black just as quickly as it could go white. So you guys got to be careful. You got to know what you're dealing with. But that's not to say that you don't to not have a relationship with them. You should. Like, I recommend it, especially if you're an SI user. I recommend uh, an ENFJ, especially if you're an SI child or SI inferior. I recommend it. Um, so anyway, SE child is all about trying to deliver the best experience ever. That's what makes them in their FE and SE combined. They become like the ultimate party animal, the ultimate person to host parties, even Tupperware parties. I went to a Tupperware party one time and I thought I'd be bored out of my mind, but because some ENFJ was doing it, it was like literally the best thing ever. It, it was awesome. I, I couldn't even believe it. And how their mastery of the kitchen was just, it was delectable. It was, it was unbelievable. I even had a similar experience with an ENTJ with their SE child, you know, and they're hosting a car show and I thought I'd be bored out of my mind, you know, and then after driving a Maserati and a Ferrari with them, yeah, not so much. It was fantastic. So anyway, so TI Inferior, this is where you got to be really, really careful with the ENFJ. An ENFJ literally believes, especially men, believe that they're like right all the time in everything. The reality of the situation is they're not. And actually, deep down, the ENFJ is afraid that they're wrong. They're afraid that they're stupid. Every ENFJ, male or female, walks around afraid that they're stupid, afraid that they're incorrect, afraid that their thoughts might not actually be true. So they're constantly going to other people, asking them, hey, how do you feel about my thought here? I had a thought, how do you feel about it? Because they want to find that external validation. ENFJs crave recognition and external validation more than anything. Why? Because they're so afraid that they're not actually smart enough. So if they get that external validation from elsewhere, they have confidence in their thinking. Even though on the outside it looks like they're confident in their thinking when deep down they're not actually confident about their thinking. That's why if you tell an ENFJ that they're stupid, they will hate you. They'll hate you for the rest of their life. And there's nothing you can do to get out of that. They will cut you off. You, you do not tell ENFJs that they're stupid. That's, that's, that's the quickest way to, to, to gather up hatred within an ENFJ. Um, of course, it's to say also, you know, don't treat them like they're the smartest person in the world either because they know their limitations, but at least respect their thinking, at least listen to them. That's the thing about ENFJs. As long as you at least listen to an ENFJ, even if they're wrong, but you've taken the time to at least listen to what they've had to say and then prove to them why their point is incorrect, They'll have no problem with you because you at least gave them their day in court and that's all they ever want. And quite frankly, that's how you make their super ego happy. If you, if you continue to give the ENFJ their day in court, their super ego won't come out. But if you don't give them their day in court, their TE demon will be like, well, this is unfair. You know, this is not the rules of our relationship. Covert contracts, uh-oh. And because you're not uh, dealing with these rules for these covert contracts that I gave you, I'm gonna elect myself judge, jury, and executioner with my ESTJ super ego, and I will literally kill you, you know? Uh, I'll grab the, <laughs> you know, and, and I'll, I'll grab my whip and I'll just like, watch out, watch out. You know, that <laughs> if an ESTJ demon super ego is gonna come after you, they're gonna be using a whip. And they'll literally become like this crazy taskmaster that will try to take over your life and control every little detail about your life. That is how ESTJ Demon comes out uh, with their super ego. It's because they're perceiving, see ENFJ has become super indignant where they're perceiving uh, unfair treatment. And it's because they feel like they're not being given their day in court with their TI inferior. You have to give the ENFJ their day in court. It is crucial without their day in court, they don't even feel, they, they, they start believing that you don't value them. You have to give them their day in court. It's important. You have to communicate with them, over communicate with them. And in fact, of all the types, there, this is the one type that you want to over communicate with more than any other type. Constantly inundate them with communication information, no matter how trivial that information is. They want to know about it. They want to hear about it. It's crazy but it works. And even though, especially ENFJ men, they claim that they don't want all the trivial information, but when you look at it in practice, they do. So don't believe them. 
like literally don't believe them over communicate with them it only goes it, 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 it's so much better because it keeps their ti inferior informed and the more their ti inferior is informed the more smart they feel the more effective they become the more confident they become and they actually are able to to meet goals and uh, to become super diligent and super productive that's another thing about enfjs when they get over their insecurity, when they're secure in their thinking, they can activate their ISTP subconscious and they literally become the most diligent person, one of the most diligent people. The same thing happens with ENTJs, with their FI inferior. If they believe that they're doing the good thing, if they believe they're being a good person, they can activate their ISFP subconscious and also become super diligent. ISPs are the two types that are the most diligent of all the 16 types. And you really want to activate that inner diligence inside ENJs to gain the ISP uh, subconscious diligence. They absolutely, uh, they need it. Um, and so does everyone else because they're able to be so focused, so people focused and their level of activism, community organizing, community development can come into play that when they are so diligent in that way, it literally lends the best possible experience to everybody in the community that they're working in, in their family that they're working in, at the party they're hosting, at the church they're being involved with. It's really, really crucial. So make sure you guys over communicate with them so that they can feel confident in their thinking and make sure they have all the information as well as the context. Do not leave out the context because if you leave out the context, the ENFJ can become easily confused because they have TI inferior. And that's a problem. You do not want a confused ENFJ on your hands because they're an in charge type and they'll start making decisions and, and quickly. They don't wait. They don't wait because they have SI Trickster. SI Trickster makes them impatient. SI Trickster also makes them forgetful. So they're also gonna be forgetting the context. All the information that you keep trying to throw at the ENFJ, it goes in one year and out the other. Why? Because new data coming in pushes the old out. And that's a problem. That makes the ENFJ super forgetful. So try to make sure you write things down for ENFJs, use emails, use text messages, have them write things down. Uh, like ENFJs need their own personal scribe and if that's you, like if you're in a relationship with ENFJ, please become their scribe and kind of be their mind on paper as it were because that's what really helps them engage. It helps them keep that TI inferior confident because they know that they're not going to forget anything. And if you're literally their walking library, their walking long-term memory bank, you know, their walking hard drive, their, uh, their SE child just gets so much stronger and they're able to even deliver even better experiences just because you are in their life. And that's amazing. So, so uh, now into their unconscious, the uh, INFP. Um, so FI Nemesis, this is a major, major problem with ENFJs. FI Nemesis is a little bit difficult to get around. It's because they walk around worrying every day about their self-worth. ENFJs are worried about their self-worth every single day. It is crazy how worried about their self. They always want to know they're doing a good job. It's just another reason why they need that validation, that external validation, that external recognition. If you have an ENFJ that's giving their all in your organization or in your church or in your family and you're, or, or at a party or whatever, and you're not giving them recognition for the good job they're doing, not only are they going to hate you, but they're no longer going to be motivated with their NI parents to actually help you because deep down, ENFJs, they don't care about the money as much. They don't care about status. They, like ENTJs do, they care about recognition, external validation, appreciation. You need to give them appreciation because if you give an ENFJ appreciation, then they stop worrying that they're a bad person. And they do this all the time. And because they worry that they're a bad person, they hold everyone to this crazy standard of high perfectionism because they're perfectionists, they're idealists. And they're holding everyone to these insane ideas of ideal. And the FI nemesis knows that they are not, they're not able to even meet their own standards of ideals or idealism. And that makes them feel bad about themselves while simultaneously they're holding everyone else to those same standards. But if you show appreciation in the ENFJ, if you give them recognition, that doesn't matter anymore. And then their head doesn't get too big for their britches. A lot of people think that when you show appreciation to, in, to a person in that way that they're going to become arrogant. Not really so much with ENFJs because they're already, already afraid that they're dumb and they're already worried that they're a bad person. So they're not really liable to get as arrogant. They may get arrogant for like a moment with their SE child, but like five minutes later, not really. 
because their mind is just going to slowly go back in that area of fear and that area of worry in these areas. You need to be around there to kind of help manage that. A lot of ENFJs don't want to admit it, but they need to be managed. They need their thoughts managed and they need their feelings managed. And their feelings are best managed by you saying how good you feel about them and how great the experiences that they give you. And you do that through, um, uh, through uh, um, words of affirmation. That's their love language. Their main love language of ENFJ is words of affirmation. They want to receive words of affirmation. Their secondary one is like gifts. because they love giving gifts, they love receiving gifts, but words of affirmation are even more. You know, like an INFP, which is their shadow, it's the opposite. INFP, the, their number one, uh, uh, you know, love language is receiving gifts and, and, then, and then words of affirmation, primary and secondary. But for primary, for ENFJ, it's definitely words of affirmation. So that's what they need to get over their FI nemesis. So any critic we kind of talked about at the beginning of the video, um, they can jump to conclusions. They criticize other people about their intentions um, to, the much, to the point where it causes them to become really mistrusting of others. And it's like really frustrating. So do your best to do demonstrations of loyalty, but don't go super high with demonstrations of loyalty or else they'll come to expect them on a regular basis to the point where it could actually become like abusive because they'll do their loyalty checks where they'll push you the loyal person away so far away just to see if you'll bounce back remember ENFJs never push a loyal person to the point where they no longer give a damn everyone has their limits and who are you to elect yourself this person it's like well I've done all those good things for you because I have this covert contract with you that I never told you about or communicated with you about so I'm gonna do a loyalty check to see if you'll still bounce back to me or not and then all of a sudden because you've done that to me I decided to throw your ass in the dumpster and not have anything to do with you because you went too far with your loyalty check especially over a covert contract that you never even told me about to begin with great that's how ENFJs alienate their friends and their family and their lovers don't do it like seriously guys, don't fucking do that. It's like horrible. It will really, really, it will really destroy your relationships. And how a relationship focused the ENFJ is, like you will see them get super mega depressed after they've realized that they have alienated someone. Remember, FE hero means they feel insane amounts of guilt and ENFJs can be guilted easily. Guys, avoid guilting your ENFJ unless they deserve it. But if they don't deserve it, watch out. Do not let them be guilt. And remember what I said at the beginning of the video, they can have, they are, they are weak to covert manipulation and ENFPs especially, and INFPs are masters at using guilt to get what they want. So ENFJs can be very vulnerable to that. So if you see your ENFJ being guilted by somebody, you need to get in there immediately and put a stop to it. Do not let them be guilted unless they deserve it. But even if they deserve it, there's a danger. You need to do your best to protect your ENFJ from guilt. And ENFJs, please watch out and realize how guilty you guys can get and how that guilt can cause you to have your decisions be influenced. Please be very careful about that. I know you want people to value you. I know you want people to appreciate you. I know you want that recognition. But if you put yourself out there too far, you are liable for feeling insane amounts of guilt and then using that guilt uh, against you so that it forces you to make decisions that you never would have made before previously. It's a huge risk, so be careful. So SI Trickster we talked about, they have a hard time forgetting things. They store their memory in the physical environment. So when they pick up uh, when they pick up objects, they remember where that object has been or where it's from. You know, all of the memories attached to that object just instantly come back in their head. You know, uh, sticky notes, uh, notes, emails, texts, very important. Make sure ENFJs, you store your memories in the physical environment because you're not going to remember it or have somebody else around that is an SI user so you can tell them stuff so they can remember it for you. I highly recommend that. This is why ENFJs need to be with high SI users, especially SI child or SI inferior and sometimes SI hero to help them remember things. Um, I've never really seen them get with SI parents so much in a romantic relationship scenario. It, it I'm sure it happens, I just haven't really observed it very much, but make sure you have an SI user in your life that you can talk to about things and confide in so that they can remember these things about you. And because they remember, you feel valued. It's like, oh, you remember that amazing experience? I really etched your soul with my SE child for that good experience I gave you. Yes, they remember. Anytime SE child does something for me and gives me a good experience, I remember. I, and I recite it to them at times, all the good things that they've done for me, because sometimes they need to know that so that they remember that they're not a bad person and they remember that they're not stupid. 
And remember, TE Demon, we talked about earlier and how it works with the super, super ego. Remember, fourth function gives you access to the subconscious. Uh, bottom function, the eighth function gives you access to the super ego. Remember, they need their day in court. So always give them their day in court. Always listen to their thinking, because if you don't, their demon will kick in. They'll become their super ego, and they'll be they elect themselves judge, jury, and executioner if you're not careful. So you got to be careful with that, because they will sell you down river first chance they get if they are not getting their day in court with you. You must give them their day in court. Remember, they're an in charge type guys. They're a structure type. You know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of elegance, you know, uh, ENFJs are very benevolent in their in charge and they're benevolent because they're trying to help people and they're trying to help you craft the ultimate experience. It'll all be about, uh, you know, caring for others and I'm very, very caring and whatnot, but like if you, if you don't go there, that benevolence will go away and they'll become cruel. A cruel taskmaster with a whip where because all because they never got their day in court after all of their positive contributions they made to you. So watch out for that guys. You do not want a cruel ENFJ on your hands because the ways that they can come after you and screw you over, it's unbelievable. Be careful. You have to be careful with all that. So anyway, um, if you uh, found that video uh, to be educational or helpful, please leave a like or subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions about ENFJs, leave a comment in the comment section. I will do my best to uh, help you and uh, answer your questions. Uh, the next video we're going to be doing on is going to be on the ESFJ, which is similar to the ENFJ. And uh, again, we're just going to be going and doing these profiles for all 16 types. And then once that's done, uh, we'll move on into virtue and vice. And also I'm gonna be doing some more videos on human nurture pretty soon. I know I've been focusing on nature a lot, but I just wanna get the foundation laid, uh, especially with all these profiles, um, so that we can move forward into uh, other discussions. And uh, I will continue to always be doing human nature videos on Jungian analytical psychology and personality type, but the human nurture stuff is gonna be really important. So we're diving into manhood, womanhood, as well as um, uh, just how relationships actually work mechanically, human attraction dynamics, those types of subject matter as well. And I'm going to be doing a series on sales and how to use type to maximize your ability to uh, close deals. So anyway, uh, stay tuned with us, guys. Uh, more to come in the very near future. Have a good day.